Hello, welcome to my workshop. My name is Colin Scott Thompson. I do a bit of rigging in Spain, in Puri Brava. I'd like to share with you some experiences that I've had over my years in the maintenance world. In the following video, I'll be dealing with hard pulls, reserve rip cords that are excessively high loaded. We'll look at the cause of that and some of the possible solutions. In more videos to follow, we'll be dealing with emergency procedures and other common defects and errors which seem to repeat themselves. Gotta pull more than that to pull more. These first two have been happily jumping for six months. Really? If you want to live, you need to pull that. They were never given the opportunity to make practice pulls. Great job. Look, locate, cut away secondary. Gotta pull more than that to pull more. The next two are rigs that haven't been jumped. They're life ready for Double jumping. Stop. This is an internet purchase arrived from the States. Ah. Fuck. And this guy that I just had a funny feeling about his reserve a few months after it was packed. Listen to the sound of the pin. Impossible. This is me now testing it with the load cell. Goes through 27 kilos. That's impressive. What would you say? No, I should stop. Impre <laughs> impressive. Order. I got this video from some guys further south. They needed to do a repack. Okay, And they were quite surprised when they couldn't get the ripcord pulled. If you insist on doing a test pull after the reserve repack, you'll find this stuff out before putting the equipment on your back and going up in the aircraft. If you have an emergency exit at low altitude, the Cypress might not be able to help you. You need to be able to pull that reserve straight out the door. Here's a simple way that I set up the equipment to conduct a practice pull or test pull. Of course, if the reserve's been dropped off, the practice pull can be made without the temporary pin in place. But always when the equipment is picked up after a repack it should be tested by the rigger and then of course more importantly by the person who's going to be jumping the equipment it also gives you an opportunity to practice your procedure a little bit closer to reality I'm using a clamp on the Velcro to avoid damaging the Velcro itself and also to stop the pin from slamming into the housing during the test.
reloading after the test is a real simple load up the pilot chute, press down and reload the ripcord. For reserves with externally mounted pilot chutes, the loop is finger trapped and could slip during the test process. So I mark the top of the loop and this allows me to see if the finger trapping has slipped during the test. That pin really needs to be extracted all the way. Pulling it until it moves a little bit is not enough. Sometimes I've had pins moving with six or seven kilos for the first few millimeters and then by the time it gets to the end of the pin, the scratch will have really dug in and the force will go beyond 12, 15 kilos. This is a different angle of me preparing a parachute for a test pull where actually in this case I'm using my load cell to check how many kilos it takes to pull the pin. After I've tested it, it will then be set up again and the person who's going to be jumping the equipment will test it themselves. They need to be the final judge. My work has no value whatsoever unless the person who's operating the equipment can complete the job themselves. Safety is not a priority, it's a prerequisite. The surface hardness of the pin is really a factor in the hard pull situations. Scratching the pin definitely increases the pull force. You can take the pin out and remove the scratches and polish it up like glass, put it back in and you might get lucky but then again you'll find some that just start scratching straight again. Getting a proper hardness to the surface of that pin is my dream. Curiously, these uh, older pins do bend more easily, but they're not scratching as much. Sometimes I get good results with them. I hope one day the manufacturers will adopt the titanium nitride treatment on the reserve pins. You see it on drill bits and other mechanical uh, race components, etc. And for the upmarket sewing machine needles with titanium nitride, you definitely feel the difference. Marvelous material. And it looks great. Think about that. Yeah, the parachute industry needs titanium nitride coated pins. If you insist on jumping equipment that's untested, here's some tricks that you might need one day. I hope you don't. The two hands and one leg technique might just save you. Or carry a tin of spinach. I've seen that work in the movies at least. And then there's always the option to open your jumpsuit zipper and check what you have on your chest.
If it's a big S, you're in luck. Thank you for watching, and I hope it wasn't too painful to sift through my first video. To quote Eleanor Roosevelt, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourself.